Now, this may be something of a stereotype, but over the years I've noticed that in particular Americans with German ancestry, or for that matter any European ancestry, sometimes very proudly show off their family crests. However, they probably belong to a different family and in most cases I've seen aren't even crests. There's nothing wrong with being interested in your ancestry. The problem is that there are a lot of people out there who will gladly take your money and sell you an untruth. So let's talk a bit about heraldry. If you're looking at this, it's not a crest, it's a coat of arms, which is part of a heraldic achievement. Now in English we very often say coat of arms when we mean an achievement, but strictly speaking the coat of arms is just the design that is painted on the shield. The shield may be shown with a helmet, a torse, a mantle and a crest. Yes, this is the crest, the thing that goes on top of the helmet. Anyone who promises to find your family crest and gives you a coat of arms doesn't know what they're talking about. At least in Germany this is the minimum required for a full heraldic achievement, but other elements can be included if you want them. The shield can stand on a compartment and be held up by supporters and there may also be a motto. Not the family name, please note, a motto. Coats of arms are associated not with names but with families. Different families might have the same name but completely different coats of arms, but more of that later. If the bearer is a member of the nobility there may also be a crown depicting the exact rank, but if instead of a helmet there is a hat, that indicates that the bearer is a clergyman. In English and French heraldry the design of the helmet indicates the exact social rank of the bearer, but in Germany this isn't really the case. A plainer helmet will usually indicate an ordinary citizen and a more fancy helmet will usually indicate somebody from the upper classes, but it's not a hard and fast rule. Incidentally, I am going to be talking a lot about men. Coats of arms originated as a kind of military insignia. The reason the mantle, which is a piece of cloth, is shown like this is to represent the fact that it's been cut to ribbons in battle. So it was quite rare in those days for women to be granted coats of arms. An unmarried woman would use her father's coat of arms, a married woman would use her husband's. And yes, I am also talking about individual people. While the concept of a family coat of arms does exist, this doesn't mean that everybody in the same family has the same coat of arms. It wasn't quite as strict as in England where no two individuals could have the same coat of arms, but in Germany it did sometimes happen that members of the same family could have different coats of arms, especially if the family split into different branches. For example, the 14th century merchant Hans Fugger had this coat of arms. After his death the family split into two lines. The one headed by his older son Andreas had this coat of arms and the one headed by his younger son Jakob used this coat of arms. Later Jakob's second son Georg started another new family line with another new coat of arms. Sometimes individuals within the same family would difference their coats of arms. This could be done by, for example, changing the colours, rearranging the design, or adding new charges and so on. A man who didn't have his own coat of arms had the option of taking his father's coat of arms and adding an extra symbol to it to indicate which son he was. The oldest son could add a label which looked like this. Then when his father died he could simply remove the label. Other sons could add other symbols. Now there wasn't actually a concrete rule about this, but this is one system that was sometimes used in Germany. I say could. In Germany, unlike in England and France, it was normal for the sons of a nobleman to just use their father's coat of arms. If an achievement was to be different, this was normally done by taking a different crest, ironically. Still, if you give somebody your German family name and they give you your family crest, a little bit of scepticism would be called for here. It might belong to a different branch of the family or even to a different family entirely. It also doesn't mean that you're descended from nobility. In medieval Germany, that is to say the Holy Roman Empire, achievements could be granted to ordinary citizens. 
And while it's true that achievements belonging to the nobility had special protections, that all changed in 1918 when Germany became a republic. And now anyone can have one. Here's mine, I've just decided. If I want, I can register it with a roll of arms, but I don't have to. Now, apparently it's not clear whether personal heraldic achievements are protected under the same law that protects personal names, but they're definitely protected by copyright law, so this is mine now because I made it. But where you do have to be careful is with coats of arms belonging to organs of the state. Local and national governments use coats of arms officially, and you can get into trouble if you use them in a way that suggests you are somehow connected with them. Some cities and states provide differenced arms specifically for use by private citizens, and may use more modern logos for marketing purposes. So to sum up, it's not a crest, it's a heraldic achievement. You may not be entitled to it, but even if you are, that has no real significance. It doesn't mean that your ancestors were anybody special. Which is not a very positive note to end on, I'm afraid, but worth remembering before you spend your money. use the phrase coat of arms to refer to an achievement, but is strictly speaking a <laughs> The oldest son could add a <laughs>